Good Tuesday afternoon to you. Four o'clock time for Sports for CLE. Thanks for joining us. Plenty of Browns to talk about. A little bit later in the show, Brad Ward from the Orange and Brown Report will join us. Uh, we begin with some news uh, from the Browns today. They relieved Mike Prefer, special teams coach, of his duties earlier today. Kevin Stefanski released uh, a statement. Um, I appreciate everything Prief has done for this team in the three seasons as my special teams coordinator, but I've decided to move in another direction in the best interest of our organization. I know the city will forever be grateful for the job he did acting head coach in our wild card win and his contributions while leading Brown special teams unit for the last four seasons. We wish Prief the best uh, with his next opportunity. Mary Kay Cabot, Browns beat reporter from the Plain Dealer, Cleveland.com, tweets this out. Browns have requested permission from the Colts to interview their special teams coordinator, Bubba Ventrone, former Browns safety uh, for the same post here. Uh, let's welcome in Mary Kay Cabot, Browns beat reporter. Uh, also had that tweet. Uh, Mary Kay, is the expectation that um, they will be granted uh, permission to talk to uh, Bubba Ventrone? You know what? I don't know. I think it depends on what Shane Steichen, the new head coach of the Indianapolis Colts, want. The funny part about that is he's really good friends with Kevin Stefanski. So, uh, you know, that's kind of interesting, too, there that, um, you know, those guys are are pretty close to each other. And uh, Kevin wants to hire his special teams coordinator. So, we, you know, we'll see what what Shane wants and, uh, you know, and then they will go from there. But you know, word out of Indy looks like it, it seems like it's almost a foregone conclusion that Bubba Ventrone will be the new special teams coordinator of the Cleveland Browns. And I think if they can pull that off, I think it's a fantastic hire. I think it's really, really great. I remember covering Bubba here. I've watched his career over there. Uh, I think he's got the energy. I think he's got the drive. I think he would be just a great addition to this coaching staff. And again, you mentioned uh, Shane Strachan, named head coach of the Colts a couple weeks ago, was the OC for the Philadelphia Eagles. So that's the reason um, that coaching staff is in flux. To your point, uh, Ventrone has been really good with the Colts special teams. Take a look. Um, these are PFF rankings in the NFL from 2018 through 2022. Uh, that's when Bubba Ventrone was the special teams uh, coordinator, the coach. Fifth in 2018, 2019 up to 21st. From 21st to first, it's tied for second, tied for fourth. Um, he was the special teams captain for the Browns from 2011-2012 uh, season. Uh, so it would be a little bit of a homecoming. But when you see those rankings, you see why Kevin Stefanski and uh, the Browns would want him, Mary Kay. Yeah, absolutely. He's really good at his job. Uh, you know, I, I think, as I mentioned before, you know, he's played special teams. He was the special teams captain here. He knows the energy that he takes. He knows how that can change a game for you. Uh, you know, I again, when we went over to Indianapolis and the Browns uh, practiced against the, you know, the Colts in that 2019 season, Got to catch up with him a little bit with Bubba Ventrone and, you know, watch him coach a little bit. And, uh, you know, he he really brings it. Do you remember when, you know, Bill Cower was the special teams coach here many, 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 many years ago? Uh, you know, it's that same sort of energy where, you know, you might see him running down the sidelines, you know, on a return or something. But, uh, yeah, I think he's going to be really good at the job if they can get him. All right. Uh, there's some openings now on this coaching staff, one in particular. Um, the quarterback coach, um, as, as you had reported uh, last week ahead of everybody, Drew Petzing was in fact named the offensive coordinator for the Arizona Cardinals uh, under Jonathan Gannon. How do you think the Browns move forward trying to find a new quarterback coach? Well, it's a great question, and they've been keeping things pretty close to the vest in terms of Kevin Stefanski's plans so far. So I don't know if uh, you know, if Chad O'Shea will be moved to quarterbacks coach, I don't know if maybe they they have thought about T.C. McCartney doing that. He was the tight ends coach last year. I don't really know for sure yet if they've just considered kind of, you know, giving Alex Van Pelt the offensive coordinator, the dual role again of quarterbacks coach and not adding another person there. So there's many, many different ways they could go about it. One thing that I don't think they do, will do 
I highly doubt they will do. And that is, I had suggested this at one point, but it's really not going to happen. And that is, you know, why not take a look at Deshaun Watson's private quarterbacks coach, Quincy Avery, who's worked with him basically since high school, who, um, you know, who worked with him during his 11 game suspension to get him ready for the season. Uh, they're very close. They know each other very well. He knows every single thing there is to know about Deshaun Watson and what he needs to be a good quarterback. I thought that might, you know, there might be something to that. Think outside the box a little bit, bring in somebody that can just kind of be an advocate uh, for Deshaun. But that comes with its own set of pros and cons, and I really don't see it happening. Um, do you think they go outside the organization and, and just get a, a different set of eyes, a different set of thoughts that, you know, how do we incorporate and get the best out of Deshaun Watson in the structure of the offense that we want to run? Or do you, do you sense, do you think they just stay in house? You know, they might stay in house, but it might not be the worst idea in the world to perhaps hire someone maybe from the college ranks who really understands, uh, you know, the, the college game, the dual threat quarterback and all, all those kinds of uh, concepts. So, you know, I again, I think thinking outside the box is always good. And we saw that they did that with their safeties coach. They went out and they hired Utah State defensive coordinator Ephraim Banda for that. And, uh, you know, so that's something a little bit different. And I, I think that it wouldn't be the worst idea in the world to do that at quarterbacks coach, too. Yeah, I would agree with you. All right. Um, before we go to break, let's head to the voicemail of Truth and Reason. Hi, I'm David. I live in Ted Dusty, Ohio. I've been a Browns fan since the cardiac kid. And as far as coaching goes, we got to get coaches in there that can get the most out of the players. You know, the biggest problem we had over the years was going through head coaches like shoes. But Kavansky has a chance with an elite caliber quarterback, and time will tell. As always, appreciate all the voicemails. Um, Mary Kay, I, I tend to agree to a point. Um, the constant change early in, in – um, the Haslam's ownership was was a challenge. At some point in time, players have to go out and perform. You know, it's it's the age old thing. Is it coaches coach, players play? You, you need both. Yeah, it's it's a combination of things, and obviously, uh, this is is not an ideal situation for Kevin Stefanski to have to basically overhaul his staff heading into his fourth season. But when you're coming off of two seasons where you didn't make the playoffs, you have to look at every aspect of the organization and find out how you can fix it, find out where the leaks and the holes are. And they have determined that these are places where they can do better. And, you know, he knows a lot of different people. Now he understands what he needs at certain positions, what this particular roster needs, what the defense needed. You know, he went out and got a disciplinarian and someone with a vast amount of experience to coach up the defense. And, uh, you know, and now he's going to have, uh, you know, just a new person at the special teams coordinator post. And so, um, again, it's not ideal to have to shake things up quite like this, but uh, in the long run, it could be the best for this football team. Um, it, it certainly, to me, it says there's a sense of urgency, and that's, I, I don't think that's ever a bad thing. No, it's not. Uh, there definitely is a sense of urgency. They're heading into the second year of Deshaun Watson's five-year contract. And it, as we have mentioned many times before, that's at an average of $46 million a year. They already have one of those wiped off the books from 2022. They can't really afford uh, to waste another of Deshaun Watson's very expensive seasons without making it to the playoffs. So every effort is being made to get there. Mary Kay Cabot, Brown's beat reporter for The Plain Dealer and Cleveland.com and I are gonna step aside, take a quick time out. Uh, other side of the break, We'll uh, take a little bit of a look at the defense. Uh, what may happen? Uh, how many defensive linemen, free agents, draft? We're talking Brown Sports for CLE. We'll be right back with Mary Kay Cabot. Come back to go forward. Back to learning new things. Back to pursuing your dreams. Try C has flexible learning options to fit your life. And every year, more than 1,000 local companies provide Tri-C students with real-world learning. The right education can boost your lifetime earning power by hundreds of thousands of dollars. Start now with a college education you can afford. Tri-C, where futures begin. 
The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. The Greater Cleveland Sports Hall of Fame celebrates the star athletes and notable sports figures who were born or have made their home in Greater Cleveland. It tells the story of discipline, commitment, perseverance, sportsmanship, and excellence in achievement. It encourages and inspires those who believe in sport and its direct impact on the well-being of our community. Go to clevelandsportshall.com or follow us on Twitter at GCLE Sports HOF for more details. We continue talking Browns here on Sports for CLE with Mary Kay Cabot, Browns beat reporter for the Plain Dealer and Cleveland.com scouting combine next week. Um, Mary Kay, when you look at 2022, um, and this is from one of your Hey Mary Kays, um, do you think it was dysfunction or just things kind of snowballing and not going their way? I think there was some dysfunction in 2022. The reason why I say that is because you had things uh, that happened that you know you wouldn't expect to happen when you have a player like Jadavian Clowney refusing to go in on first and second down in a football game that's a, a serious egregious error for a player to make uh, those kinds of things can lead to losses uh, that one particular in particular came in a 23-20 loss very tight game to the Baltimore Ravens he could have made a difference if he had played the whole game and especially against Lamar Jackson I mean he's a tremendous edge setter Jadavian Clowney is. So that was a, a very crucial game to decide that, you know, you just don't want to play on first and second down. Um, so, you know, that was one thing, but there were a number of other things. There were players getting, uh, you know, benched for one reason or another. Even Miles Garrett was, uh, you know, sat down for the, you know, the first series of a game and, uh, you know, and had to be fined. I mean, it was just, it was just a weird year in that way. And I think that's why some heads rolled at the end of the season and uh, so I think that some dysfunction did creep into the 2022 season. And that's why we're seeing some of the changes that we're seeing now. Yeah, I would agree. And, and I think, you know, that those things happen when you don't reach what you expect of yourself. I think that, you know, that losing kind of breeds a lot of that without question. Um, let's turn our attention to the defense. What areas of the defense do you think Jim Schwartz wants to improve right now, um, you know, first? And um, again, this is from one of your Hey Mary case. <clears throat> well, I mean, obviously the defensive line is what he's going to be all about. That's what he cares about. I actually got an opportunity to talk to a number of his former players, his former defenders uh, from the Philadelphia Eagles when I was at Super Bowl, the Super Bowl week. And, um, and they raved about him and they just talked about how great he is with the defensive line and how he just gets everyone uh, going forward into the quarterback and uh, how great he is at all of that. So uh, that's going to be his area of focus, the point of emphasis. And I think he's going to realize that they need a talent upgrade and they will somehow end up with another good defensive tackle and a good number two edge rusher. So those are things that they're going to be looking at over the next two months for sure, maybe a little bit longer than that if it stretches into the draft. Uh, but you can expect him to bolster not only the run defense, but the pass rush. Now, the last time he was uh, the coordinator of the Eagles in 2020, they were third in the NFL with 49 sacks. The Browns this year were tied for 27th with only 34. So that number is going to increase. It needs to increase. Miles Garrett needs help. More guys need to be getting those sacks and that pressure. And, and again, this is um, another one of uh, your Hey Mary Kays. Um, how much do you think they spend on the defensive line? How many do you think they bring in? Is it a high price guy? Do you think it's, you know, two or three guys that uh, Jim Schwartz thinks, you know, we can, these guys have specific skill sets? Do you have a feel for that at all or, or a thought? I don't have a feel for it yet, but I know uh, that I would go after, you know, a couple of the best in free agency if they actually do hit the market. I would go after former Eagles defensive tackle Javon Hargrave. 
He had a career high 11 sacks in 2022. Uh, he's exactly the kind of defensive tackle that you would need. And the other good thing about that is that he knows the Jim Schwartz way. I think it's important to bring a couple of guys in that really know how you like things done. So you would have sort of the, uh, the double added benefit of that with him, which I think would be tremendous. Uh, as far as pass rusher is concerned, uh, I would be going after the uh, Yannick Nagakaways, that level, that type of uh, guy that can come in and get you a, you know, a bunch of sacks, almost maybe even double digits. He had nine and a half with the Colts last year. I think he'd be a great, great compliment to Miles Garrett. And, uh, you know, when you look at, again, when you look at the Eagles defenses and some of the other defenses that Jim Schwartz has coached, you know, he gets a lot of guys up there in the sack total, totals. And as we know, uh, Miles Garrett had 16. The next highest was, was Taven Bryan with three. I mean, that's just not going to cut it. Yeah. Well, if Miles Garrett had 16, they had 34. That means everybody else had 18. So that's, yeah, that's definitely not. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Um, Let's talk a little bit about Martin Emerson. Third round or third round pick last year, really good as a corner. Could you see them moving him to safety or I mean he's a really good corner. Yes, he's a really really good corner. Uh, but I do think that there will be um, efforts to get the best players on the field this year. There, that's always a point of emphasis. But uh, you know, if there is some other way to get Martin Emerson, Greg Newsom and Denzel Ward on the field and feeling good about their roles and being uh, in positions to maximize their strengths, uh, you know, without Greg having to feel like he's not at his best spot inside, you know, maybe they will explore some of that, or maybe they will go down the matchup road. I, I really don't know how they're going to uh, solve the problem that they have where Greg Newsom has made it very clear that he really doesn't want to pr play primarily in the slot. Uh, in 2023. I don't know what's going to happen with that. As I mentioned in my haze, the Browns are not too worked up about it. They're, they're just not looking at it like it's even really a problem. They know uh, that you have to have a bunch of really good cornerbacks. They're excited that they have that. And not only that, they've got those three guys that I just mentioned under contract for at least three more years. And, you know, look at it this way. It's a pass-happy league. The, look at the Eagles. Look at the Chiefs. How do you defend that? You, you need guys that can play cornerback, and the Browns have three good ones, so uh, I'm with you. Uh, stay on the defensive side of the ball. What do you think a good third-year jump uh, looks like for J Jeremiah Owusu-Koromoa? Well, that's going to be an interesting one because uh, we have to see what Jim Schwartz thinks about him, what his evaluation is of him. I would think that he's excited to have a guy like that that's so versatile, that's a hybrid type of player that can do so many things for you. Now, traditionally, Jim Schwartz hasn't blitzed a ton. Uh, he likes to rush with four, but there are so many things that you can do with JOK that I'm sure he's exploring those possibilities now and uh, you know, getting up there on that whiteboard and trying to work some things through and talking to some of his uh, defensive staff about the cool things that you can do with a guy like that that can you know that can drop into coverage that can go forward that can do anything that you really need him to do that can play you know sideline to sideline and has that kind of speed and range and tackle ability so uh, I'll be very interested to see uh, how he views JOK. When you look at um, like what Schwartz wants to do um, doesn't it seem like Emerson, Ward, and Newsom kind of play into that because he likes to he does like to have guys at the line of scrimmage making it difficult uh, for wide receivers at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I mean, and, and when you look at Martin, obviously, you know, Martin is a big physical player. You know, you want you want a guy like that that can match up with certain receivers uh, that have good size. And then you need a cornerback that also has really great speed. I mean, we know that Greg Newsom has that. So, you know, you can play the matchup game. There are so many different things that you can do, and I'm sure some of the philosophy in the back end will change just it w as it will on the front end. It's just a matter of how to work it through. And I also think that he might not know how the pieces and parts all fit together exactly the way he's going to want them to until he sees them play a couple of games, see how they are in the heat of the moment, see how they are adapting to the new defensive scheme. I mean, it might change up after three or four weeks that, hey, maybe this guy's better in the slot or, hey, let's play, uh, you know, let's try 
Martin at a different role and put Greg outside and put Thomas Graham as the nickel. I mean, we just don't know yet, but I, you know, it might take a little while to figure it out. Yeah, the, the thing that he made a big deal of in his introductory press conference, which is really the only time we heard him talk, was, you know, I got to find the way, I got to find what guys do best and put them in situations to succeed. And you know, that's the definition of good coaching, I think. Yeah, and you know, at that time when we talked to Jim Schwartz, he really, you know, he had been working. And so it's not like he had all kinds of time to be studying the Cleveland Browns every single week. By now, rest assured, uh, he has dug into that film. He knows these guys. He's talked to some of them. And, uh, you know, and he really knows exactly now what he has in terms of his personnel and what he needs. That will come very much in handy next week when he goes to the NFL scouting combine and helps with the evaluation of some of these players. Mary Kay Cabot, Browns beat reporter for the Plain Dealer, Cleveland.com and I are going to step aside, take one more time out. Other side of the break, uh, we look at what ESPN believes are some of the best fits for free agents. Uh, we'll tell you who they think fits well with the Browns. Sports for CLE will be right back. Stay with us. Come back to go forward. Back to learning new things. Back to pursuing your dreams. Tri-C has flexible learning options to fit your life. And every year, more than 1,000 local companies provide Tri-C students with real-world learning. The right education can boost your lifetime earning power by hundreds of thousands of dollars. Start now with a college education you can afford. Tri-C, where futures begin. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. The Greater Cleveland Sports Hall of Fame celebrates the star athletes and notable sports figures who were born or have made their home in Greater Cleveland. It tells the story of discipline, commitment, perseverance, sportsmanship, and excellence in achievement. It encourages and inspires those who believe in sport and its direct impact on the well-being of our community. Go to ClevelandSportsHall.com or follow us on Twitter at GCLE Sports HOF for more details. We continue talking Browns with Mary Kay Cabot, Browns beat reporter for The Plain Dealer and Cleveland.com. Uh, Mary Kay, I know you wrote an article. Um, what do you think will happen with Greg Newsom, Amari Cooper, Donovan Peoples-Jones, and others in this offseason? Well, we can start with Greg Newsom. As I mentioned before, I really don't think that the Browns are too worked up about his response to the uh, fan on Twitter who wondered if he would be open to playing inside again this year, and he tweeted, all caps, N-O. Uh, but the Browns are not looking at that as something that needed to be addressed right away. It's, you know, it was an off-season sort of random thing. Uh, it wasn't something that, you know, they immediately picked up the phone and thought, oh my gosh, we've got to talk to Greg Newsom right now. we got to figure out what we're going to do. I do think it will probably have to be addressed in some fashion but it doesn't seem to be something that is you know that there's a sense of urgency uh, to get this worked out so i think what will happen is ultimately they will have a conversation with him he will talk to jim schwartz he will find out exactly what jim schwartz has in mind for him and uh and i'm sure that they'll find a way to make him excited about his role i mean he's a former first round pick if he does have to play some inside you know, I'm sure that, you know, he can get on board with that as long as he's probably also getting some outside reps. So so that's basically, I think, the deal with him right now. I don't think that they have any plans to change anything anytime soon in terms of, you know, moving him or, or anything like that. That's not on the radar. And then Amari Cooper, I've mentioned this a number of times. He's got a almost, I think, a $24 million cap hit next season. Uh, you know, that's that's a lot of money for a player that's turning, I think, 29 uh, coming up here pretty soon. But, um, you know, 
he's he's worth a ton. He's worth a lot of money. He's one of the best receivers in the NFL. And if the Browns want to keep him around, you know, they probably can just do a little bit of bookkeeping, a little bit of restructuring and find a way to hang on to him. So maybe perhaps watch for something like that to happen. It might not have to, but it possibly could. And then Donovan Peoples-Jones, I think they might end up letting that one play out and see how it goes and let him, you know, get through his uh, final season of his rookie contract and, you know, gives him a chance to really try to get, uh, you know, have a much better season even than last year, which was a very good season and, you know, add to to his value. Uh, so that was that for him. And then I'm trying to think of who else I had in there. Oh, Jed Wills. No, I don't know that I put Jed Wills in there, but they will pick up the fifth year option for Jed Wills. And uh, and yeah, I, I can't remember who else I had in that in that column now, but um but that's what's happening with some of these guys. Okay, um, let's take a look. These are NFL free agency best fits uh, for the top 50 players as ranked by ESPN.com. So number 11 is safety. Uh, Jesse Bates, they say his best fit is with the Browns. Post and split field range to cover some grass along with the scheme versatility to play from depth uh, or spin down in coverage. Log four INTs, eight pass breakups last year. Cincinnati has posted 14 career interceptions over five seasons. Um, what are your thoughts, Mary? I, I think he's a really good player. He's probably going to cost a, a, a pretty pretty hefty chunk to sign him, I would imagine. Yeah, and I think that might be the issue. I think the issue might be the cost. Now, maybe they will go out and try to get themselves a player like that and invest in, um, in Jesse Bates, uh, but they've got a lot of uh, high-priced players this year, and they've really got to be thinking about that. Can they get the job done for less money? That's what the issue is with John Johnson three right now. Uh, you know, he's got the $13.5 million cap hit for next year, and that just might be a little bit more than they want to pay for him. So they're going to have to talk to him about a possible restructure. And if they can't work something through, then, uh, you know, then he could be somebody that goes on the trading block or somebody that ends up, um, you know, getting released or whatever the case may be, because they can save, uh, I think nine point seven five million dollars mm -hmm. if yep. he is a June first designation for a trade or a release. So you know these are some things to think about. Um, not a hundred percent sure that they want to spend all that kind of money on a Jesse Bates. Yep, I would agree. Uh, this one we found kind of interesting, so we bring this up. Forty ninth on that list, or forty eighth rather. Jadavian Clowney, best team fit, the Ravens. Production declined in twenty twenty two. Physical tool, straight line power rusher who can uh, win, defined one on one, set a hard edge against, run out of the Ravens multiple fronts. Um, I, that might be true. The, the only way you can describe his performance last year for the Browns, it was disappointing. Yeah, but you know what? When when he's on, he's still <laughs> a really good edge rusher, and I actually could see uh, the Baltimore Ravens being interested in him. Uh, you know, he's the kind of player that they sometimes go for. So, you know, when he's willing to play his hardest and do his best, he wasn't that last year here. But when he is up for that, he still has plenty left in the tank. He's still plenty hungry and, and really wants to, to show people what he's all about. So, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if someone rolls the dice and takes a chance on him uh, returning to that form in 2021 when he had nine sacks. Um, this is a, another one of your Hey Mary Kays. Do you think Kevin Stefanski will utilize Deshaun Watson's talents in the same manner the Eagles utilize Jalen Hurts? Yeah, I do think so. I think you can draw a lot of parallels between uh, Jalen Hurts and Deshaun Watson, I'll think, although I think that Deshaun Watson has uh, better arm talent, generally speaking. Um, but Jalen was really, really good this season and really, really good in the playoffs and in the Super Bowl. So I do think that the Browns will look at, at Jalen Hurts' film. Of course, they'll look at Patrick Mahomes' film and Josh Allen and, and some other dual threat quarterbacks as well. Um, but I think they will draw plenty from Jalen Hurts' tape. Yeah, and um, I, I, why wouldn't you? You know, there are, there are no real new things in the NFL. Somebody is doing it. It's how you, how you put a spin on it. Um, this is from CBS Sports. One player each team should prioritize signing in the offseason. For the Browns, CBS Sports says uh, they should sign Alan Lazard, soon-to-be former Packer, career year 
2022, 60 catches, 788 yards, six touchdowns. Only 27 years old. Um, didn't really step into the Devontae Adams role the way the, the Packers had hoped. Um, what are your thoughts on, on Lazard and, and the Browns? You know, I mean, that that's the kind of production that you need from uh, a receiver for sure, from your sort of number two receiver. And, um, and of course, they have Donovan Peoples-Jones in that role, and he, did, he played a, a really nice role and was very productive as well, almost had 1,000 yards last season. But I still think they need another guy like that, um, you know, of that caliber. So, yeah, somebody like an Alan Lazard, you know, I think they should take a look at. Uh, you know, I think they should look in the trade market as well. And if it were me, I would be adding at least two receivers with – uh, sort of elite or premier ability. Yeah, I, it, again, you you want to lock all the potential that this offense can have in um, Deshaun Watson because you put that investment into the quarterback. All right, before I let you go, again, this is from your Hey Mary Kay. How far off do you think the Browns are from competing with the likes of the Chiefs and Eagles, and, and what do you think they need to do to get there? Well, first of all, I think that just having Deshaun Watson for the whole season – is going to get them that much closer to making the playoffs. When you have your elite quarterback, you've got half the battle won. And they have their guy, and they will work harder to make sure that they are maximizing his skill set. And then I would add the three other pieces that I've just been talking about ad nauseum all offseason, <laughs> and that is a, a fast, twitchy receiver, a really good premier defensive tackle, and a good, solid number two edge that can get you close to double-digit sacks. So I think if they add those three pieces and Deshaun Watson returns to his 2020 form, they should be competitive with anyone. Yeah, I, I, um, I can't argue with anything that you said. Uh, Mary Kay Cabot, Browns beat reporter, PlainDealerCleveland.com, as always. Thanks so much for the time and the insight. Appreciate it very much, Mary Kay. Sure, thanks for having me. Mary Kay Cabot, make sure you check her out. Always uh, great Browns coverage. Pages of the Plain Dealer as well as Cleveland.com. We're going to step aside, take a quick time out. We continue talking Browns. Brad Ward from the Orange and Brown Report straight ahead. Stay with us on Sports with CLE. Come back to go forward. Back to learning new things. Back to pursuing your dreams. Tri-C has flexible learning options to fit your life. And every year, more than 1,000 local companies provide Tri-C students with real-world learning. The right education can boost your lifetime earning power by hundreds of thousands of dollars. Start now with a college education you can afford. Try C, where futures begin. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. I am powerful beyond my wildest imagination. I will define my future. I will keep challenging myself to improve. Because I am a future leader of this great nation. I will be responsible for raising a beautiful family. And educating not only my generation, but many more to come. I will make a difference in my community. And I will stand up for what I believe in. I will not settle for simply chasing my dreams. I will achieve them. Because I was given a chance. An opportunity. A home. At Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America. The ultimate leadership experience. FCCLA has been one of the greatest experiences of my life. It's made me who I am today. Join us. We'll build a new future together. We continue talking Browns here on Sports for CLE. So uh, let's take a look at this uh, mock free agency in a trade. This is from Brad Ward from the uh, Orange and Brown Report. Has the Browns trading Wyatt Teller for a third round pick and then flipping that third round pick to the Jets to acquire Elijah Moore, a speedy, twitchy wide receiver 
um, who really didn't get on the field as much as he would have liked to for the Jets. Let's welcome in Brad Ward from the Orange and Brown Report, as well as the All Eyes on Cleveland podcast. Brad, I, I, um, I think Elijah Moore would fit very well with Deshaun Watson. Um, just kind of the thought process in, in creating that um, trade scenario. Yeah, uh, a lot of people push back against that uh, Wyatt Teller trade idea. So, uh, but it's um, it's an interesting thought, right? So he did not play uh, very well this year, or he underperformed his contract, to, to put it kindly, right? Um, if you look at his grades uh, the last three years, he went from 92-9 in 2020 to 84-9 and 21 to 70.3 last year. And really in the second half of last year, uh, really when the calf injury started to really bother him, um, he did not, he was like league, a league average uh, uh, player. So um, my concern is that you go forward and he still struggles. And then now everybody in the league knows who he really is and you don't get anything for him. Whereas right now you can kind of draw a line in the sand and say, oh, the calf injury, he's still an excellent player, and maybe you can get a third-round pick for him. You may not be able to at this point because people have seen the tape, but um, by trading him, Dave, you get off of $12.5 million. Mm -hmm. You're dealing from a position of strength, and I think you kind of want to lean into um, – I don't want to give up any draft capital they have for this year. So if you can get a third for him and flip it for a wide receiver, like an Elijah Moore, whoever else is on the market, I would prefer a speed guy, uh, which is why I said more. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense because you're saving some money there. Um, and you're leaning into Bill Callahan who gives you an edge on the offensive line, right? He gives you uh, an ability to, you know, bring in a Froholt who in four games uh, performed very similarly to what uh, Wyatt Teller did last year in four starts at right guard. Yeah, uh, I um, I understand it completely. And, and at some point in time, you've got, you will have, if you pick up the fifth-year option on Jedrick Wills, you'll have four offensive linemen making over $10 million. That it, it's, it's not a sustainable model. Uh, you want a strong offensive line. You want an offensive line that's above average. It doesn't have to be, you know, top two or three. Um, along that line, you went through an entire free agency um, mock-up. And, and uh, here's a look. So you have uh, Dobbs, the quarterback, coming in. You get uh, Jeff Wilson. It's a pretty good receiving running back. Moore, who you traded for. Um, Oliver, tight end. You see Froholt, uh, Levine. Now, edge rushers, you got Arden Key and Carlos Dunlop. You got uh, Enyamaya, a young guy, and Rankins, an older guy. You have him re-sign and Walker, Perryman. You got Raglan, and you get Thornhill. Now, you add all those up, and um, it's still under $60 million, and the Browns can create $60 million in cap space by restructuring two, maybe three contracts. So all these, you know, are in theory doable. Um, kind of your thought process as you were putting that together. Yeah, so uh, at running back, you hope that Jerome Ford can be a receiving back and be your number two. But you're going to have to add a veteran anyways for depth. Uh, I really like uh, Jeff Wilson, or you could even look at like a Raheem Mostert, are guys that are going to be rather cheap but bring a speed element to the position and good pass-catching ability. So uh, they bring a different kind of thing than what Nick Chubb brings if you know it doesn't work out with Ford or just as depth. Uh, adding more speed, I think, is never – a bad thing so uh and wilson's like a league minimum guy so that's like a no-brainer for me because i really liked his game uh both in san francisco where he's ran in the scheme already with shanahan and same thing in miami with mike mcdaniels there um one of the things a part of the trade uh, aspect of this was that you free up some money like i think they should attack the defense dave mm -hmm. um by not one big signing, but a couple mid-tier uh, defensive tackles and maybe a couple rotational edges, like a, like a Dunlop is considered a rotational edge. Like he's not going to play more than like 500, 600 snaps in a season. 
Uh, but like an Arden Key, will get big money because he's going to play the full load, right? Uh, kind of like Garrett uh, would. And um, in this one, I find it able to go after Key because of the freed up money. And you can't see it on here, but we're just under that is the 12 and a half million you save by getting off of Teller. Uh, and there, then you can see that that's kind of why I, I was able to get the uh, key is the highest paid player that you bring in at 9.25 APY uh, projected. So average per year. So uh, with Dunlap as your third um, uh, edge, and then you get Onyemata, who is very good. Young guy can rush the passer. Rankins is more of an all around guy can stop the run. Uh, both of them mid their tier but not spending, you know, the 20 million on pain, but two pieces at six to 7 million, right? Yep. Uh, Perriman as depth at linebacker uh, that could play middle linebacker if you needed him to and gives Anthony Walker because of his health history uh, a, a run for his money potentially there. He's coming off a really good year. I added one corner um, in free agency uh, that's new and that's Oliver. He's a slot corner for obvious reasons. You, I think that uh, with the frequency that cornerbacks are dinged these days, Dave, uh, if you have a slot corner at the ready, you can at least give Newsom the play, the opportunity to play outside when one of those guys is hurt, right? Uh, so uh, I think that having – you should at least have one guy that can play the nickel besides Newsom on the roster. So that's where Oliver comes in. And I really love Juan Thornhill. I wanted him in the draft. He's a free agent now. The Browns need that kind of a player at free safety. He's not too expensive. 5.5 APY makes a ton of sense for me. Yeah, I, I like the idea of bringing in four guys um, that add up to, you know, 30, 35 million as opposed to two. Um, you need that kind of help. Um, along those lines, this is from the Bleacher Report. NFL free agents that teams will regret spending big money on so we've said we don't want to spend big money so um, this is according to the bleacher report they say alan lazard spot track estimates his annual market value to be in the 12.5 million that doesn't appear to be an overpay given the uh, gonzo salaries of receivers um, but lazard never had even 800 yards in a season and he's caught over 50 passes just once that's playing with aaron Rodgers. and then they say deron payne a $20 million defensive lineman needs to be more than good. He has to wreak havoc and take over games. Payne did so in 2022. He had only 14 and a half sacks over his first four seasons combined. Paying huge money for one big season has backfired on NFL teams plenty of times before. Um, cautionary tales. You know, everybody likes Deron Payne, a young guy, but I, yeah. The problem is, is if you spend that and, and he doesn't produce, it's not good. Yeah, or if you spend that and he's hurt for a couple games. I yeah. mean, the Browns' defensive tackle room was not one player away. If they were one player away, $20 million Deron Payne makes a ton of sense. Whoever gets him is going to get an absolute animal. He is a terrific player. I, I have no qualms about saying that Deron Payne is a stud. Uh, it's just the money, right? It's the 20 million. I mean, you can get three really good players for the price of one, and the Browns need more help up there than just one guy. Um, now, Alan Lazard is just too similar for me, Dave. He's he's too similar. He is Donovan Peoples Jones. He is Amari Cooper. He's a he's a 50 50 ball, a good blocker. He's not going to threaten to, uh, you know, uh, lid the, lift the uh, lid off of a defense or make them change the way they they defend you because he has elite speed or anything like that. So I don't really see the point for the Browns. Maybe some other team, yeah. Uh, but listen, this is a terrible – we've talked about this before with you. This is not a very good wide receiver free agency class. So a lot of these guys are going to get overpaid. Um, just because they're the only available uh, players. And listen, teams are leaning into the offense. They want to take big swings. 
and uh, there's not a lot of big swings to be had right now. So guys are going to make more money than they probably should. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I liked your uh, idea with Elijah Moore as well. Uh, Brad Ward, Orange and Brown Report, All Eyes on Cleveland Podcast. Now I'm going to step aside, take a, a quick time out, other side of the break, some more value free agents, plus uh, sneaky good free agents the Browns should look at. Sports for CLE will be right back. Stay with us. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education program recognizes role model students and teachers from across Ohio. Nominations can now be done completely online. To nominate a deserving teacher or student, go to ohiolottery.com. In the About section, find Partners in Education. There you will find links to the nomination forms. Students, kindergarten through 12th grade, can be academic all-stars. Teachers can be honored as a Teacher of the Month. The Ohio Lottery Partners in Education, where stars shine. Scouting Combine for the NFL gets underway in Indianapolis next week. We continue talking Browns with Brad Ward from the Orange and Brown Report, as well as the All Eyes on Cleveland podcast. So these are buy low candidates um, in free agency by pro football focus. We're going to take a look at some of the, the Browns positions. Wide receiver Michael Thomas. Thomas produced a 77.0 or higher PFF grade every season in the NFL. Has never dropped more than 5.9% of his passes in a single year. He has had trouble getting on the field. Has been injured most of the last two years. Interior defensive lineman, we've talked about him. David Anyamata from the Saints racked up at least 30 pressures in every season since his 2016 rookie year. Missed the first six games last year due to a suspension for performance enhancing drugs. And safety, Adrian Amos, Packers. Amos hits free agency coming off not just the lowest graded season of his NFL career, but the only season where his pro football focus grade was below 69.0 has registered at least 20 tackles, resulting in a defensive stop six of his eight seasons in the NFL. Um, again, Brad, I, it depends on the price with Michael Thomas. I, you need a guy that's going to be available. He has not been available the last two years. Um, and Yamada, I like. Uh, you know, From what I know of him, I'm not going to say I've seen a bunch of tape on him, but he sounds like somebody the Browns could use. Yeah, um, I'm. I just am like hands off. Like I'm, I'm staying away from Michael Thomas. Like I can't. <laughs> I can't do it. Uh, I don't know what's going on with him, but like he, he's on the field for like one game. He's off. He hasn't played at all. Like I'm staying away from that. Like that just. That just. There's a problem. There's an issue there. Like I don't know if he doesn't. I don't know what it is, but uh, I think it goes deeper than just injury. I think a little bit, maybe. Uh, but it feels that way to me. Um, but I'm staying away from him, uh, and he doesn't really bring – he's more of a possession receiver anyways, right? So, like, uh, he's excellent uh, when he's on the field. I just don't know how often you're going to get him on the field. Um, Anyamata is very much, I think, right up the Browns' alley because of the pressure rate. Like, they are probably concerned more with how much pressure an interior defender can provide – and stop the run like they want to be better at stopping the run but the, the priority one is going to be getting after the quarterback so Anyamata is an excellent player I think he fits really well we'll see what happens there Adrian Amos like I would be more scared Dave about a guy coming off of an outlier great year after like eight years of being bad and signing him than signing a guy that was like eight nine years of excellent and then one year of like average play. Uh, so Amos is a very good player. Like uh, he just turned 30. He had probably his worst uh, season yet, but he's still an excellent player, I think. And in, in his worst season, he was average. So um, I think Amos is a very good player that, um, and he can do both, right? He can play some free, he can play close to the line of scrimmage. Browns have had a lot of those guys in the past. I think they need to kind of lean more into a free safety at this point. But, um, you know, if you were looking for a third safety, if you don't think the Anthony Bell's ready and you really want to invest in the, posi in the position, then you could look at a guy like Amos, who is uh, a more physical guy. Yeah, I'm with you. I think, I think they need a free safety. Um, 
but that is, you know, yeah. an elite free safety, if you will. All right, five sneaky good free agents. The Browns must sign clutch points. Uh, mm-hmm. Number five, Zach Paschal. Um, guy plays in the slot. Um, number four, Sione Taki Taki. Again, if he's healthy, liked what he did. Number three, Alan Lazard. We've already talked about him. I'm with you. I think he's a, a duplication of, of the guys that they have. Um, number two, edge rusher, Oboya a Quan Crow, and um, that's an interesting one. Number one, Ashawn Robinson, defensive tackle, and Robinson expected to be one of those value guys. Um, of those, I like Robinson and or Quan Crow uh, the most. Just your thoughts? Yeah, absolutely. So, oh, I I don't know if you're saying Okoronkwo, yep. I guess. Yep. Oh, we'll go with that, right? Uh, uh, Okoronkwo is. Uh, he is actually, I think, one of the better value edges you can get. They haven't projected at like 5.5 million uh, per year, but like he is uh, has a, an excellent, excellent ceiling. Like teams think a lot of him, um, and everything you hear about him is like he's just really close to kind of bursting on the scene as a uh, stud edge guy. So. He is definitely uh, a value piece. And same thing with Ashawn Robinson. Really like the value there. Uh, you know, Zach Pascal is an intriguing guy that hasn't really, you know, he had a better year last year than this year. Uh, I don't know if he brings anything different. It's kind of a long shot. He's kind of a flyer, right? You know, yep. um, we have enough of those guys on the roster already. I kind of feel um, that you're hoping that they take that next step. Taki Taki's a weird situation. He's on this list, you know. I would love to have him back, Dave. He showed that he can be more than your your Sam uh, linebacker. He played some middle linebacker and did it well. Uh, he, coming off the best season of his career, that terrible injury at the end of the year, he's going to miss most of the season or a good portion of it. So how do you handle that if you're the Browns? Like, I guess you could set up like an incentive-laden two-year deal that doesn't really pay him unless he plays in the first year and then maybe more in the second year you could structure something like that but like in my mock i just went with perriman instead and said give me a healthy guy that i can count on right now because the browns are trying to win today right so yeah i I couldn't agree with you more uh brad warden i'm gonna step aside take one more time out to other side of the break Look at some of the openings on Kevin Stefanski's coaching staff and how important they are. Sports for CLA will be right back. Stay with us. Come back to go forward. Back to learning new things. Back to pursuing your dreams. Tri-C has flexible learning options to fit your life. And every year, more than 1,000 local companies provide Tri-C students with real-world learning. The right education can boost your lifetime earning power by hundreds of thousands of dollars. Start now with a college education you can afford. Try C, where futures begin. We continue talking Browns with Brad Ward from the Orange and Brown Report, the All Eyes on Cleveland podcast. Take a look at this. So uh, the Browns have a number of uh, staff openings here on Kevin Svansky's coaching staff. Uh, We mentioned earlier Mike Prefer let go. So special teams coordinator, quarterback coach, defensive line coach as uh, Kiffin uh, left, DB's coach, passing game coordinator. Um, We also told you earlier the Browns have requested permission uh, to speak with Colts special team coordinator Bubba Ventrone. They have also requested permission to interview Giants assistant special teams coordinator Anthony Blevins uh, for their vacant special teams coordinator position. Blevins interviewed with Broncos um, earlier. Um, let's talk a little bit about special teams. Uh, we showed you showed a, a graphic earlier. Ventrone's uh, special teams in the Colts outside of one year have been outstanding, and this special teams unit needs to be upgraded. They need to do better. Yeah, uh, this, you know, so the timing of this was very strange, right? Like, kind of felt like Briefer was in the clear. Uh, It seems like now they were just waiting to see if they had, like, a for sure better option. And I think with Ventron, that's a clear better option. 
Um, and, and I love everything about him, right? Like, I think he's an upgrade to the staff. He's an ex-player, an ex-Brown. Uh, he has a terrific track record with uh, special teams with the Colts. So I think he's going to get this job, or at least it sounds like from some rumblings that um, he's going to go ahead and take it. So uh, fantastic upgrade, in my opinion, and I and I hope he turns it around. But uh, delightfully surprised, you know, nothing against Mike Prefer as a person. I wish him all the best. I'm sure he'll find work. But uh, I have I had seen enough of his special teams. Today. Yeah, yeah, it, it, they just need to be better. I mean that I, that's yeah. all the the production wasn't there. Browns did um, or are expected to hire Ephraim Banda as their safeties coach. Sources say Banda, currently defensive coordinator, Utah State, spent time at Mississippi State and Miami before that. That is according to um, Ian Rappaport. It's kind of interesting that they're dipping into the uh, the college realm you know he's a dc and, and that's i'm assuming jim schwartz is involved in that uh consultation with kevin stefanski hiring that safeties coach yeah i'm sure uh ephraim banda is i don't know much about him at all i know he's very highly thought of uh but that's about it right and uh you know so it does surprise me, though, to your point, Dave, that they went the college route. Like, I kind of viewed this free agency as, uh, or this, pardon me, this front office as a, a group that would kind of stay in the pro ranks. Uh, but it's interesting that they're giving him, I mean, he has never coached in the NFL before, so uh, giving him his first shot at this level. So uh, that surprised me a little bit, but uh, we'll find out about him and. Uh, He's just the safeties coach anyway, so I don't think he could do too much damage if it's a miss. <laughs> All right, let me ask you this. We see the quarterback coach is um, is open there. How important is that hire? And if if you were Kevin Stefanski, would you try to get a fresh set of eyes or, or are you keeping um, – are you, are you moving Chad O'Shea or um, Alex Van Pelt? Or are you trying to get somebody – who you might be able to steal some ideas for how you unlock Deshaun Watson in this scheme that he has. Yeah, uh, I would look at this as an opportunity, just like you're saying, to get a fresh set of eyes in there. They're they're making, hopefully, right, I, according to what they said in the press conference, they're making big changes in the offense this offseason. So uh, bringing in somebody – uh, that has experience with whatever they're shifting to more in the past game, somebody that can, like you said, fresh set of eyes, uh, clean slate, fresh view on the offense as a whole, um, fresh ideas, I think is a great idea. Uh, the two guys that, uh, you know, I guess the QB coach from the Ravens who is going to be leaving James Urban is pretty good friends with Stefanski. You know, this whole friends thing is <laughs> kind of convoluted, right? Hi friends hiring friends in the NFL is just kind of the way it goes. But uh, I I like the idea of a guy like Sean Ryan, who was with Watson for a couple years in Houston. Like, that seems to make a lot of sense to me, right? Uh, as much as they – like, this offense should be catered to what Watson likes, what Watson's good at, and he's going to like what he's good at, right? And uh, and kind of what we saw from the Eagles, right? Like, it should emulate that a little bit uh, because that's what you have. And, and you want – I mean, so much – we can talk all about the defense and everything else, but ultimately it comes down to whether Deshaun Watson is going to return to form. Uh, and if he can – then they're going to be in it, right? They're going to have a shot. So uh, I think that uh, the, the QB coach is huge, and uh, it should be somebody that he can uh, has a close relationship with. It should be an extension of him to the coaching staff, right, uh, that he can use as a sounding board. Um, and this offense should very much be more pass-heavy, Dave. And, uh, you know, it, this is Stefanski's shot, right, to turn – away from some of what is comfortable for him. And I think that's easier when you have a, a guy uh, in there 
that doesn't think the same way as you or maybe has a fresh set of eyes and ideas. Uh, yeah, I, I, um, I agree with you. It's got to be a guy that Deshaun Watson feels comfortable with, likes, and, um, and can kind of get him going the way he was in Houston. All right, before we go, uh, ranking the eight last place teams by their chances to go from worst to first. Number one, Commanders. Number two, the Falcons. Three, the Bears. For the Jets, they have the Browns five ahead of the Texans, Broncos, and Cardinals. Even with the improvement from Watson in the defense, Cleveland cannot be considered the favorite to win the division considering how well the Bengals have played the last two seasons. And while it's uncertain who the Ravens will be, uh, we'll have its starting quarterback 2023. They can win the AFC North any year uh, when they have Lamar Jackson. So I guess uh, what they're saying is the division is tough, so the Browns are not ranked as high. Um, I think if you rank the last place teams, I think the Browns have more talent. If the Jets get a quarterback, I, I'll, I'll say they're, they're right there. Bears, Falcons, and Commanders, I, you know, I think the Jets are better, or the Browns are better than all of them, with the exception of the Jets if they end up with Derek Carr or, uh, or uh, Aaron Rodgers. Totally agree. A hundred percent. Bears have a hundred million dollars in cap space and they don't know what they're doing with their quarterback. I don't know how they get ranked above the Browns here, but uh, yeah, Jets, uh, I would agree, have a talented roster, but no quarterback, but they're working on that, right? I don't know how that works out. Falcons had, a, you know, a better year than most people thought last year, but no quarterback. Uh, commanders, kind of the same thing, right? Um, with Watson, or if Watson once again can return to form, the Browns kind of leapfrog all those teams, in my opinion. Uh, and uh, that's the key to it, right? So, um, and I, I get the whole Bengals thing. Like the Bengals are the, have been proven to be very good, but they got a lot of tough decisions to make this offseason, Dave. They have uh, some money decisions you know they're good problems for a team right you got to pay your quarterback and your star receivers and but not everybody is going to survive this summer uh on that Bengals roster uh they'll still be the favorite for sure i don't know what happens with lamar but it certainly doesn't look good for ravens fans uh, at this point um so i mean it's a tough division and they beat up on each other to to the you know three and three for every team last year in the division, right? Uh, it's kind of uh, wild that way, but Browns, it's it's all about Watson. It's all about Watson. If Watson is the guy, then they can be right there with the Bengals. Uh, no question. If he can return to form, uh, then uh, the Browns will be right there, uh, you know, battling them for the division. And, and we know they kind of have the Bengals uh, number a little bit, so. Brad Ward from the Orange and Brown Report, All Eyes on Cleveland podcast, as always. Appreciate the time and the insight. Thanks very much, Brad. You're the best, Dave. Thank you so much, man. All right. Make sure you check him out, Brad Ward, Orange and Brown Report, as well as the All Eyes on Cleveland podcast. We're out of time on Sports for CLE. We'll see you back here tomorrow at 4. Have a great night, everybody.